Hey there, in today's video we are talking about how do you find clients as a grant writer. This is a particularly effective method. If you're new to it, you've never even written a grant before, right? It's the method that we teach in the Grant Writing Unicorn Collective, Works Wonders, and I am going to break it down now. All right, let's hit it. Alrighty, finding clients as a new grant writer, don't beat yourself up. Finding work, whether we're talking about you landing a new job or getting a client as a freelancer, the world has shifted, it's changed. There's a lot of well-intentioned advice, but frankly, it's old school and irrelevant. There's a better path forward and it's informational interviews where you set out to have a conversation out of genuine curiosity, not looking to get anything but learn from that person. It's a method that consistently finds opportunities and doesn't feel salesy and gross. So you're probably thinking, cool, I'm going to expand my network. I'm going to have all these informational interviews, but how does that turn into a paid gig? It's by asking for nothing. So when you ask great questions and they feel heard and like you genuinely care, that's when all of a sudden you, t you turn off that, the noise in your own voice and you're genuinely listening and you see, is there an opportunity for me to help them? And if there is, we'll show you how you can position yourself to address that need that they have. And if you don't, no problem. But what you can still get from that conversation is a recommendation on who else to speak with. So there's three steps to follow in this model. I'm going to break these down uh, individually. So step number one is considering your niche. So, all right, if you're a grant writer, you're probably interested in a lot of things. That's part of what goes on in our persona and our identity. It's great, but really think about who fires you up to work with. What gives you energy? What is your past careers? What have they looked like? How can they roll into this world, right? I want you to, yours is your homework assignment, to develop a contact list of 20 organizations that you find inspiring, and then specifically a contact person underneath there. Um, one of the most common questions we get is, well, who should I talk to? Talk to whoever you want. It doesn't have to be someone in the fundraising or the grant writing department, if there even is one that exists. Talk to an executive director. Go talk to the mayor of a small town. I don't care. Dream big. You want to be considering basically any organization you think fires up you up, you want to serve them. And please, dream beyond your geographic boundaries. The beauty of grant writing is you can serve someone from anywhere. Step two is having these informational interviews. As a reminder, the intent of these conversations is not to sell your grant writing services. It's coming in with a state of curiosity to learn and see if there is a way to help. You definitely wanna prep your interview questions ahead of time. We provide a ton of these in our grant, well, basically a whole sample interview dialogue in the Grant Writing Unicorn Method, but basically I'm gonna go through a few of those in a second. I encourage you to record your call so that you can go back and listen to what they said and specifically take lines from, from their conversation and put it into a proposal to them if it applies. It's also just helpful for you to figure out common themes. Oh, is there, is there some language that 10 of these interviews all shared? Cool, start using that. So here is a sample email requesting an informational interview. Short and sweet three to four sentences, that's it, right? Hey, Barbara, the whatever you wanna call it program that you're running inspires me. Can we connect for 20 minutes early next week for an informational interview? I'm thinking about getting to, into grant writing, or maybe you're already doing it, and say, you know, I am a grant writer and I would love your perspective as it relates to this type of industry as I decide if I wanna get into it or not whatever you want to say. Thanks so much, Meredith. Another method that's working really freaking well is go use loom.com. Loom is a video recording service. You can shoot, use it for free in under five minute recordings, which it should, your video should never go that long anyway. It should be 60 seconds, maybe two minutes, but you could actually have up their website and show some things that meant a lot to you and then make your ask, hey, can I have 20 minutes? So that's working super well, it really stands out. 10 out of 10 recommend. Uh, so, I mean, if any of you email me or and ask questions, I'm probably gonna respond with a Loom video. It's just cool, works, works great. Okay, sample questions. Here are a couple that I pulled from our course. What do you find most frustrating about finding grants to fund your work? 
right? Dial in there, go deep, keep asking questions. Does your organization know what grants they plan on pursuing in a given year? They probably don't. And this is a huge opportunity for you to position yourself to do a funding strategy for them. Uh, if you could change one part of the grant writing process and control it 100%, what would that be? What would change in your life if you didn't have to spend so much time thinking about grant funding and you could spend it in your zone of genius? So this is just a sample of 20 plus questions, but you get the idea when you ask a good quality question and you come in with those prepared, it's truly more of an interview. It's not a 50-50 dialogue. And boy, you're gonna draw out some incredible information by doing this. So you could call this message mining, if you will. Study those interviews. So take those recordings from those Zoom call conversations you're having or whatever. You can upload them to a basically uh, audio to text transcription service. We like Temi, it's pretty affordable and pretty accurate. Then you're gonna get a document that is the conversation. And what's so handy is now go through those documents. We put them all in a single Google document and study them. That is how the method came to be, was discovering, wow, everybody wants help figuring out what grants to go after. They know they wanna be writing grants, but they don't even know which ones they should be pursuing. So study your interviews, seek to have at least 10 and find those common themes so that your services can speak to them. Next up, and this is a, I have to give full credit to Haley Burkhead for teaching us this. This is something that we learned in taking an online course, but it's so good that we have applied it to basically what we now teach. So you need to develop your tangible transformation sentence. So if someone says, hey, what do you do? You answer with this one exciting sentence. I help define a certain identity, get what is the change in transformation that you provide so that they can avoid preferably a pain or you could say some other deep desire. One pain or one desire, not a laundry list of five things they get from you or they avoid or achieve, it's one. Here's an example. I help nonprofits focused on the environment write and frankly, this should be even more specific, um, right? Federal, winning federal grant applications through the you know, EPA Brownfield Grant Program, right? I mean, you could go really specific so they can stop fearing how their organization will survive, right? So that's an example. I help small to medium-sized tribes write winning social justice grants so that they can connect their communities with the resources they need to get and stay well. Here is Alexa Swenson. So she added, she took our training, added grant writing as a service to her existing copywriting business, Goods of a Soul. She won 1.3 million in grants within four months of getting trained. So kicked some booty. And actually you might recognize her name because she writes blog for, posts for us. She's a beautiful writer. I think she's a way better writer than I am. So that's why I've given her some blog responsibility. Here's an example of a tangible transformation sentence she uses. We help health, youth, and social service organizations tell your story so your grant proposals are awarded and your donors feel compelled to give generously. Isn't that, doesn't that get ya? And your donors are compelled to give generously. All right, so let's say you've had 10 informational interviews and a couple of these uh, conversations that you've had, they've asked you, actually, yes, we would love your help putting together a funding strategy, which by the way, if you're wondering what that is, I've got other YouTube videos, search funding strategy, and you'll be able to find them. Okay, so that's that separate conversation. But now comes a time where, okay, you are engaging in a professional relationship and it's time to send a proposal. Now, I know the excuses and mindset barriers that you're gonna be dealing with right now. You're probably thinking, hey, how can I charge if I don't have more experience or uh, any experience? Do I really need to submit a proposal if I'm doing it for free? But what if I fail? Then what? Do I have to give them their money back? No. So we're going to address all that stuff. We address it in the course, but here's what you need to know. You always, always send a proposal. It manages expectations for scope, fee, and schedule. Even if you choose to do it for free, even though if you know me and you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that we are pretty adamantly against volunteering as a grant writer if you're trying to build a career path. And also the proposal process really weeds out people that are going to waste your time or take advantage of you. So if it's saying, hey, we're clear here on what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and, and what your role is in this, then it just 
instantly ups the ante, you're treated more professionally and you get the results that you want. So like I was saying, the proposal communicates professionalism. The other thing is then all of a sudden the power dynamic becomes equal. It is you and the client, you delivering a professional service and them paying for that value. But, and so what's good about this is that when, if you're not getting paid and you're just kind of doing it, well, all of a sudden it's like they're doing you the favor so that you can get experience, right? And that's, that's not how it works. That's how you burn out. So you need to send a proposal. And I know then that here comes the next round of excuses and mindset barriers. And you're gonna think, but wait, don't I need an actual business then? No, you do not. Our belief is that we want you making $10,000 of freelancing income before you choose to go and actually establish an LLC for your business. So you can contract yourself as a self proprietor or a sole proprietor, I think I goofed that up, um, and fill out a W-9. Basically, um, it's just gonna get added to your taxes as additional income. It's not a freaking big deal, really easy. So in our program, we have contracts and templates for how you can put together a funding strategy, what the language looks like. Basically, a bunch of our students just use this to a T, fill out, customize a little bit as, it's, as is needed and from their conversation with the client, but otherwise they're just using this and it's working beautifully. You get that bad boy back, it's signed, you save a copy of it and you are hitting the ground running. All right, then what? So the key takeaway is that you can do this, right? So you can get into grant writing without experience. Um, actually, I'm, I'm frankly sort of talking about some of the other points. I pulled these slides from uh, our core webinar and training that we have on our website. I'll link it below so you can get the other two bits of information. Um, but here's the part that we actually focused on. Informational interviews are a highly effective method for finding new clients and jobs. It's not something that necessarily always turns into, you know, landing the proposal right away, right? Um, but what it but what it does is it gives you an opportunity. It either they either ask for the proposal, they want to have it right away, um, or it's an opportunity that comes out in three months, and they say, hey, I remember we were talking, and you said you're into grant writing. Um, you know, we actually need help with this. Is that something you have time for? So then that becomes your opportunity. It's sort of like you're filling your pipeline, you're building awareness. That, hey, this is what I do. This is, this is my practice. Uh, also, I want you to make that tangible transformation of sentence of yours scarily narrow. Okay, you're doing it right if you make it freaky, freaky tight, because if you try to be everything to everyone, you are nobody to anyone, right? So we have to be bravely, courageously narrow. All right, so that's it for today's conversation on how can you find clients using the informational interview method. And if you have any other questions, it's something we break down in way more detail within the Grant Writing Unicorn Collective. Our goal is for you to be able to pay for your investment in the program within three months of joining and the rest is profit, gravy on top by using this informational interview method to land a paid opportunity to get paid to do a funding strategy for a client, right? Works great. All right, if you have any other questions, post them in the comments below or hit the subscribe button if you like this video and want some more. All right, see ya.